Hey all, welcome to Stephanie B Creativity. Today I'm going to take you through a couple little projects that you can do with granny squares. Now I make my granny squares with size three yarn and a 3.5 millimeter hook. So this is a small hook, but I'm doing mine with half double crochets and I'm only doing two per cluster. That gives me a really nice firm fabric with tiny holes. Yeah, I like it this way. You can do this with multiple colors of yarn, do it with a single color of yarn. It's up to you. I want to show you how to take a simple square and make cute little pockets with them. So this little pocket right here, all I have to do is put a button on it and now I've got a cord keeper or a earbud pocket. See how I've got the little button on that? You don't have to do buttonholes, just find a button that fits through the hole at the corner. And look at that, now I've got this sweet little pocket. You can make these any size you want. So if you want a bigger cozy or pocket to hold things, you can either take four little squares and stitch them together like this. Or you can make one bigger square like this. This is going to be a cozy for my Kindle. And I went ahead and added a couple extra rows on the point that's going to be the flap like that, which just gives me a little bit more coverage. Isn't that gonna be cute? So I'm going to show you how to make a granny square. I'm doing it with this actual square right here. So I'm not going to actually stitch this one together on the screen to make my cozy. I'll get it stitched and I'll show you. But I will show you with one of the small pockets because that way we have less stitching to do. But look at this. It's just making an envelope. We're making envelopes with granny squares. You can do anything with granny squares, but we're doing this and I'm really excited to show you how this all comes together. So let's go ahead and start making a granny square. We're going to grab a color of yarn that I think you'll be able to see. This is a size three yarn, so it's, you know, smaller than worsted. It's what a DK weight. I like to do a kind of a magic loop or a magic ring. This is around my fingers, over my fingers. Then I hold everything like that with my, between my thumb and one of my other fingers. I go under the first one and over the second one and I twist it. Now, Something that you want to do is make sure you're working with the yarn coming off of your ball and you're going to pull through and pull through. Now this is sort of latched in place. You want to work over or around the tail because what that's going to do is it's going to give us the opportunity to snug this down nice and tight. If you do a standard granny where you do like a three chain and then you chain, then you work into that loop, you can never tighten it down completely. So I'm going to do a single chain. I'm going to tighten that down. I never count my chain for turning or my chain when I'm starting on my uh, half double crochets. So I want to do two half double crochets over this tail and in the loop. So we're going to go wrap over, go in the loop, draw up, wrap over. So now I've got three loops and a wrap over out here at the end, I'm gonna pull through all of those. 
That is a half double crochet. So now next half double crochet, I'm going to go wrap over, go in the loop and wrap over, draw it up. Now I have three loops on my hook right here. I'm going to wrap over and pull through all the loops. So I have my first cluster. Now I'm going to chain one. I'm going to make my next cluster of two half double crochets. And if you notice, this is going to be different than most granny squares because we're only doing two half double crochets and we're only doing a single chain in the corners. We do not chain between any of the other clusters. All right, you're only chaining in the corners. That makes this really tight and the holes are really small. So I've chained one, wrap over, go in, catch, wrap over, and pull through all three loops. Wrap over, go in, back up. I have three loops on my hook. Wrap over and pull through all three. That's my second cluster. Chain one. Wrap over, go in, pick up, pull up, wrap over, pull through. That's halfway done on my third cluster. Now I'm all done on my third cluster. Chain one, wrap over, go in, wrap over, pull through, wrap over, go in the loop, wrap over. And now we have four clusters and something that doesn't look like a ring, right? Now you're going to go ahead and pull on the tail. This is the short piece. Pull on the tail. And look at that. It pulled it down nice and tight. We will be using that tail to secure this ring then I'm going to go in to this top V right here. I'm going to go under both legs of that top V. I'm slip stitching to the top of my first half double crochet. So that's just push through the that V, wrap over, pull through, and pull through. All right. And right now you've got a teensy tiny little square. Wrap over, pull through one. That made it that made a little a little chain that gives you room to turn your work now we are i want to work into that that single chain so i'm wrapping over going into that single chain or under it in that space and pull through we're making one cluster chain one we're going to make our second cluster of half double crochets. And like I said, you can do this with single color. You do not have to change colors. I did two half double crochets, a single chain, two half double crochets. Do not chain at this point. You're going to make another half double crochet into that chain one space right here half double crochet, half double crochet, chain one, half double crochet, half double crochet, do not chain. Yarn over into that next chain one spot, pull up, half double crochet, half double crochet, yarn over, chain one, half double crochet, half double crochet, do not chain. You're going to the next chain one space from that row below, yarn over, go through, pick up your yarn, pull through 
the loops. Yarn over, chain one, the second half of our last corner. All four corners are made and you are going to slip stitch into the top V of the first half double crochet on that round. Pull through, pull through, chain one. And I kind of tighten my chain one down. Now I'm going to turn. I am working into this, this gap between my corners. So now I am going to do half double crochet, half double crochet. That is my complete cluster. I do not count my starting chain. All right. My turning chain is never counted in the way I do it. So two half double crochets. Do not chain. Go into your chain one space in the corner and do a corner, which is two half double crochets chain one, half double crochets. And now you've got a gap right here in the, in between those corners, you've got a gap. Wherever there's a gap, you're going to work two half double crochets. So now we're going to go into that gap, half double crochet, half double crochet, don't chain. Now we're going to work into, work another corner. And we're going to go into that right there, single chain space. So half double crochet, half double crochet, chain one, half double crochet, half double crochet. Don't chain, but you're going to work two half double crochets in the space. See that? Half double crochet half double crochet, don't chain, go into your corner, into that chain one space, half double crochet, half double crochet, chain one, half double crochet, we're finishing up this corner, do not chain, go into that gap, the gap right here, Pull up, two half double crochets, do not chain, go into that last, see we're all the way around already, we're going into that last chain one space, pull through, half double, two half double crochets, one chain one, half double crochet, finish the corner with two half double crochets and now you're going to slip stitch into the top of the first double crochet on the round. I did my single chain. Now I'm flipping it over and in this space right here, I'm going to do two half double crochets. One, two, and I'm already on my corner. So now I'm going to do a half double crochet, two half double crochet, a single chain, two half double crochet, our standard corner. From now on, that is exactly our standard corner and it's our standard pattern. Now, next gap is two half double crochets. I have another gap that's right here, so I'll do two half double crochets. Look at that. We're already to the corner. So now I'm going to do the standard corner, two half double crochets, a single chain, two half double crochets. Go to the gap, two half double crochets. So this is a slightly different way of doing a granny. Like I said, it gives you uh, a smaller 
hole, a much tighter hole, uh, you can throw coins in this and the coins will not fall through because your holes are about a quarter of an inch or less. So your, you know, unless you are working with coins or something that are so tiny, I wouldn't put sharp pointy things in like, um, you know, screws or bolts, but you could certainly throw washers in if you wanted to. So corner is done. Going to my gap, two half double crochets. Next gap, two half double crochets. This is exactly what you're going to do from now on. You're going to do your four corners exactly the same. Two half double crochets, a single chain, two half double crochets. And then on the sides, wherever there's a gap, between clusters, see, I'm going to do two half double crochets. And then when you get around to the end of your round, see I started here, I've gone all the way around and I've ended here. Now I'm going to slip stitch into the top of that first half double crochet. Chain one, pull it down so it's snug and flip it over. That is exactly, exactly what we're going to do. I'm going to do one more round and then I'm going to change colors. Now some of you are going to be very observant here and notice that my corners are curling and that is okay. That is because I am working pretty tight because I want this to end up being a really as solid a fabric as I can make it and still be granny square. All right, that's the reason why I'm using a small hook and a slightly smaller yarn. This is where I'm going to change colors. So before my last stitch here, I'm going to grab my next color of yarn. And I think I'm going to go with this kind of lighter green. And I can go ahead and cut that loose. I'm leaving a fairly decent tail here. All right, I'm not worried about the tail because this is my last stitch and I want to finish the last stitch with the new color. So this is a slip stitch. So I'm slipping through, slipping through, give it one chain like that. I'm going to turn. I've got my half double crochets in all of the open spaces. and half double crochet in the next gap. So what I'll do is I will meet you back here when I have finished this square because now it's exactly the same pattern all the way along. Wherever there's a gap, you're going to do two half double crochets. When you get to a corner, it's two half double crochets, a single chain and two half double crochets. You know what? I might even make it bigger. I'm, I think I'm going to make it big enough to completely cover this. So it's going to take me a few rounds to go because I'm going to make a square about this big. All right, now the granny square is all done and we have this. Now I didn't show you adding this extra little bit. It's just the exact same stitch, two rows. And I did it, I put it on after I figured out where the corners are so like this and I marked the corners and then I just did the same half double crochet cluster stitch stitching with a corner that's all I did for that and this would also make a really cute little purse all you would do is right here at this point you would put a strap and wouldn't that be a sweet little bag? You can use it like a clutch. You could fold it down a little bit farther and it could just be a clutch bag. It could be a makeup bag for in your uh, bigger bag or travel bag. Right now, I want to show you how to stitch this together. You could stitch it with any color. I'm going to stitch with a different color so that you can see 
where I'm stitching. So right here, I have my square. And all I'm doing is folding those corners up into the center. And I like to play with it until I get it to the angle that I like. Sometimes I will make these points come all the way together in the center. That makes a taller and skinnier envelope. Sometimes I like to bring this point up in the middle and not bring these points all the way. That makes a wider envelope. This size right here would be really good as a pocket tissue holder. So I think maybe that's what I'll do. And I'm going to use a couple stitch markers just to join it like that. And like that. These little stitch markers are awesome because they're, they're basic, basically just plastic safety pins. You're going to use just a standard darning needle and a piece of yarn. I am not going to tie a knot in the end. So when we're doing a mattress stitch on crochet and you're doing it on the same edge, your points are not going to match each other. But since we're not trying to do this as so that it mimics a knit stitch, it doesn't really matter. You're going to go in the middle right here. You're going to go in the middle of a V and go under and go in the middle of a V and go under like that. You don't want to catch this end here. You want it to sort of stay free. So you're going to go under a V in the middle of a V. There we go. We're going to go in the middle of a V on every one of these. In the middle of a V. Or at the point of the arrow. And right now you're going to go, but I'm seeing the color of yarn. Yep. And that's okay. Because when we pull it tight, you won't see it. It will just be a straight, flat stitched seam. So under that V and up through the middle of the next one. Under the V and up through the middle of the next one. Kind of match them up. They don't have to be perfect. See, I just sort of went backwards a little bit to pick up the next one behind totally fine. Have fun with it. This really, really isn't hard. And once you learn how to do a mattress stitch, you can do this for all of your crochet and knitting. All right, I've gone all the way to the end. And at this point right here, you can see all those stitches and it looks a little bit haphazard, but when you pull on the ends, look at that. That is a totally invisible seam. Isn't that cool? And it looks almost like they were crocheted together. Now you do have this end here. You will want to uh, run that back up through those stitches. Just keep it inside in that kind of like run it through a tunnel. And once you've run it back up through, you can snip off those ends. I would have used the yellow, but it would have been harder for you to see. I'm going to grab a button, just standard sewing a button on. I am going to tie a knot in the end. So I'm wrapping it around, wrapping the thread around my fingers and I'm going to roll and pinch between my fingers like that and then pull it down 
nice and tight. So now I've got a really nice tight knot at the end of my yarn or end of my embroidery floss. The reason why I want a really tight knot is because I am going to go from the back through, but I don't want to pull this all the way tight. Okay. I want that to be hanging loose for a minute. And now I'm going to go and find another spot here that's on. Don't be feeding your uh, thread through the holes. You want to make sure that it's going through yarn. Now, when I bring that needle back, I am going to split this open and I'm going to feed my needle through in the yarn or in the embroidery floss. See like that right there. And when I come through it, now everything is locked together and you're not going to pull the knot off. The knot is actually wrapped around its own thread. So make sure you're coming. See, don't come through the hole right here. You want to make sure you're coming through the yarn. Otherwise, it's not holding on to anything, right? There we go, couple crisscross. And now I'm going to come back through underneath of the button right here. On the outside of the pocket, but under the button, I'm going to wrap my yarn or my embroidery floss, my thread around the button. One, two, three, pull it so that it's a little bit tight. What that does is it makes kind of a threaded thread shank to your button. See how it gives you a little bit of distance between the fabric and the button. That gives you room for your uh, other layer to be attached or to slip over the button. Now I'm just running back and forth a couple times. And then I'm going to leave a bit of a loop and go in the loop and pull it down. Do it one more time. Go through that loop and pull it down and then snip it off. A button sewn on and you're going to go, but how do you button close it? You see all these lovely holes going up the corner edge. Those holes are big enough to use as button holes. I like to go to the very end right out here, kind of stretch it apart just a little bit, bring it down and stretch it over the button. But if it's See how this is really loose right here? Hmm, I don't like that. Why don't we go to another go to another one of the holes and just button through another one of the corner holes. And look. Now we've got a cute little pocket that is adjustable. If you enjoyed this, please click that like button, subscribe to the channel, share the video with your friends, and make sure to come back for more fun, quick and easy beginner projects that don't look like a beginner made them. <laughs> we'll see you guys soon. Remember, go out, do something creative, take care of yourself, and be kind. See you soon. Bye-bye.